In her book Antigone's Claim, Kinship Between Life and Death, Judith Butler turns to the figure of Antigone as a potential exemplar of feminine resistance to state power, deviating from the trend of seeking state authority for feminist policy aims. However, Butler finds something different from what she had anticipated, and this deviation becomes a central theme as she explores the constitutive difference within Antigone. Antigone, born from an incestuous bond, exists within and outside the norms of kinship. Her incestuous genealogy causes a sliding of identifications, creating a crisis in representation. Antigone's heritage and her father's curse seem to condemn her to a living death making her live in the tomb even before any banishment occurs. Butler sees this death in life as an allegory for those whose alternative kinship arrangements render them culturally unintelligible. Antigone's uncanny existence and her troubling of the representative function prevent her from becoming a stable representative of political resistance. Nevertheless, she has been repeatedly pressed into representative service by various thinkers. However, what she represents, according to Butler, is kinship as the sphere that conditions the possibility of politics without ever entering into it. Butler explores the interpretive faltering that occurs when Antigone is framed as a representative of kinship at the threshold of the social. Antigone represents the aporia of representation being representative of the unrepresentable. She represents the deformation and displacement of kinship, challenging the reigning epistemes of cultural intelligibility. Butler examines whether this disturbance of the relationship between kinship and cultural intelligibility grants the possibility of social transformation. Antigone's liminal positioning both opens and closes the potential for her to mark a transformational political resistance. In Butler's analysis, Antigone represents a politics of mourning and a claim to the right to publicly mourn, which serves as a political grievance. The intertwining of mourning and plaint in the semantic range of grief and grievance is explored highlighting how Antigone both haunts the field of power that excludes her and is haunted herself, marked by a form of social melancholia, resulting from that exclusion. The question arises as to whether Antigone resists state power, or if the power of the state is ultimately resistant to Antigone's resistance. Butler argues that Antigone's claim can only be articulated through an appropriation of the language of sovereign agency, even though she is barred from accessing it herself. While Antigone may not achieve the effect of sovereignty she seeks, her claim has a performative impact that destabilizes the terms of exclusion. Butler concludes that Antigone acts, speaks, and becomes someone for whom the speech act is a fatal crime. However, this fatality exceeds her individual life and enters the discourse of intelligibility as a promising fatality a social form of an aberrant and unprecedented future. Antigone's fatality becomes a potentially fatal legacy to the system of intelligibility that obscures her claim. Thus Butler's interpretation of Antigone evokes a radically different future that challenges the oppressive signification of the present.